Welcome back to The Forge. So if you haven't done so already, remember to click that like and subscribe and the notification tab as well for our latest video updates. Now, I'm running a lot more courses in the workshop and something I need a lot of then is hammers. Now, we all want to rush out to the shops and get ourselves a nice hand forged hammer with all the hammer marks and the fanciness, but a hand forged hammer probably set you back at least a hundred quid. I'm not sure what that is in dollars. That's an awful lot of money. Now on eBay, I managed to pick these up for about 15 quid. Um, that's a two pound 14 hammer. Uh, this one's made by a company called Kennedy. Now that's cheaper than I can actually buy the steel to make one of these hammers. And if you're just starting out, that's absolutely fine. Um, and I also managed to get a three pound version. So, um, you know, you've got quite a wide selection and quite a wide choice with these things. And a cross beam is definitely the way to go uh, if you're starting out. Um, but the problem with these hammers straight off the shelf is they're a bit rough around the edges, a bit sharp, um, and they've got corners. So we're gonna talk today about dressed and naked hammers. Um, and I'm gonna show you the process to sort these out and get them ready for forging. Now, if we look at the close-up of these two hammers, you can see just how sharp and severe those corners are. There is a very slight camber on the face of that hammer where someone has attacked it on the lintier, but it's not very even. Um, so we've got to sort these out so we can actually use the damn things. Um, and it's just the same on the three pound. They've done exactly the same. They put a 45 degree chamfer on there, but we need to radius those off and reduce the size of the contact point on the hammer to, so we end up with more controllable rebound when we're actually forging. Um, so I'm going to leave one of these in its original state and I'm going to tidy up the other two, possibly, and, uh, and then I'll show you what the difference is when you're finished. So I've got a 40 grit belt to start on the linisher. Um, it's nice and coarse, it's going to take the, the bulk of the material away. Once I've roughed this out a bit better, I'm then going to jump up probably to an 80 grit and then maybe a 180. Um, and I'll probably finish it about a 240 or something like that. So I'm going to work our way up through the grits and I'll stop and show you uh, the progress as we go on. I've taken the worst of those corners off and I'm going to jump up uh, a couple of grit sizes to uh, really start to polish that out really. So that's the 120 grit. It's still quite coarse, still quite rough on the surface. But when I run my thumb over that, I've taken out all of the big marks. Um, there's no ridges that have been left behind. So I'm gonna jump up now to probably a 400 or thereabouts. I was gonna do a 240, but I'm thinking, I can't be bothered. Um, so I'm gonna jump up the couple of grit sizes again, and we'll go over it again and take some of these marks out. Uh, this is a 320 grit, I think. Make sure we put it on the right way around. Always helps. So this is a scotch bright belt. These are quite nice for finishing um, and blending in. If you've got any straight marks in there. So it's taken me less than five minutes. Um, four belts, we started off with a 40. We jumped up to the 120. Then we hit the 320, and then I've just gone straight onto the blue Scotch Bright. I could mess about with this a bit more. I could go to a yellow Scotch Bright, and I could even play with a Trizac belt as well to get a mirror polish, but I don't need to. That's good enough. Okay, so there's the two hammers side by side. That's the naked one, and that's the dressed hammer. Um, it didn't take me very long. That was like five minute tops. That's using the linisher. Obviously, if you haven't got one of those, then you can do it with a file and emery cloth. Um, Personally, I'm way too lazy to be playing with emery cloth and, and hand files when I've got machines. 
Um, what I forgot to do was obviously the back end, so I've got to do exactly the same to that. So I'm going to take this back to the linisher, do the cross peen, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to chuck some steel in the fire to warm up so that I can show you how it actually affects a piece of steel. Was finished cross paint. That took me all of about two minutes. Only used three belts for that. Went in with the 120 to start with because it was pretty good before we started. Just had those chamfers on the on the worst corners. Um, so I've just blended those chamfers in. Put a bit of a radius in there. But you don't want to bite in too far, otherwise you're losing the width of your cross paint. Um, and it's only a small hammer this one, so I don't want to take too much weight off either. So uh, yeah, that's ready to go. So it's time to put these to the test and show you the difference between a dressed hammer and a naked hammer. Oh my god, what did they put on this hammer face? I think the undressed hammer has actually got clear lacquer on the surface. Something stinks. Now to disprove the whole purpose of this video, I've been forging for long enough, they've actually forged a short table on there and haven't put any hammer marks in it. But in the process, I haven't been using the toe or the heel of the hammer. So to a certain extent, it doesn't matter what the face of your hammer looks like, which defeats the purposes of this video, but it does make a difference and I'll show you. So if I dig in the toe of my hammer, if I'm going to draw out or something similar, um, and I'm quite low heat here, See those marks on the surface there? I don't know if you how close you are. So these are marks that are being left behind by these sharp corners on the uh, toe of the hammer. Um, and if I'm not careful, if I forged over the top of those, I'd actually end up forging in little cracks, um, little folds, uh, which then develop into cracks and then cause you problems, especially if you're doing uh, knife making or some pattern welding. Um, and I don't want that to happen. So um, I'm going to put in a few more marks on this, just to emphasise the point. Um, I'll, I'll use the cross bean on here, and then I'll forge another short taper um, on a piece of bar with the other hammer. Um, let's get some heat in here. Then. Yeah, there we go. That's a good mark. Now again, forging that taper, I've used the face of the hammer. I haven't been using the uh, toe or the heel of the hammer. I'm not gonna fuss this too much because the whole point is to show you the hammer marks these things leave behind. Um, so I'm gonna take another heat on this bar as well, use the heel and the toe and the cross beam um, and show you the difference then in the cold pieces of, of the marks that are left behind. Well there we go, there's the two pieces side by side um, and the, the difference is really stark. Uh, that undressed hammer is left really crisp, sharp lines in my piece of work and I don't really want that unless you texture in and that's the sort of texture you're after. And equally on the cross beam, it's got a really sharp edge to it, um, which again is going to cause folds, it's going to cause problems later on. Whereas the dressed hammer has left some quite deep marks because it is quite a sharp cross beam this but I'd be able to hammer all those out quite comfortably and I'm not worried about leaving little folds in the corners. And equally, where I've dug the toe in quite intentionally, it's left indents, but again, I can hammer those out quite easily. That isn't an issue. Um, to remember to hammer the marks in is the problem for this. And then on that taper, I've actually got a couple of rogue corners on that little taper as well from that undressed hammer. So, it's really important when you're buying a new forging hammer. It doesn't matter if you buy it from you know, Walmart, Tesco's, wherever you're getting your, your cheap, nasty hammers from. 
they'll all do the same job as the hammer you've just spent 200 quid on. Um, but with the little addition of five minutes on the linisher to dress those faces makes a world of difference. So I hope you've uh, found this little tip helpful. Um, and if you enjoyed this, click like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Born and Forge. Cheers, guys.